Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Scott Dugan, and in this video series, we're gonna take a look at Isotopes RX-7. Now in this series, we aren't gonna to go top to bottom, full explained, I show you everything and anything that you want to know about the software. In fact, we're just gonna talk about what's brand new in RX-7. Now the first thing I wanna show you is simple, but it's a huge time saver. And if you're a heavy RX user, and you get in here, and start working, your workspace might very well start looking like this. You're doing a bunch of processing, a bunch of restore work, and your screen is just completely cluttered. And all you want to do is get back to the waveform back here. And before you had to, you know, hit X or come over here and deselect the modules. Now you can go up to Window and select Close All Floating Windows. You can even use a shortcut. And on a Mac, it's Command Option W. I really like that little workflow improvement. Makes life way easier instead of having to click all over here. Now, one of the biggest things in RX-7 is this repair assistant up here. If you're familiar with other Isotope products like Ozone or Neutron, machine learning is quickly coming into the music making process. And now RX-7 has a repair assistant. So let's say I've been working on this piece of music and there might be something not quite right with it. Now that sounds pretty good to me. You may not know exactly which module to grab. And in that instance, we can use Repair Assistant. And then we can select which type of material we're working with. In this case, music and we can start analyzing this file. And now it's looking for clips, for clicks, hums, and noise. And it's going to specify a module chain or different modules that it thinks can fix those problems. All right, so now we can see that it's, uh, it didn't detect any clipping or clicks or hum, but it did detect some noise. So now it's given me three different repair options that might fix that issue. I can click here to listen to the original. And then I can move over to option A. And we can see that there's some voice denoise and some gain processing on this one. Okay, subtle. Next we have B. And this option is for some spectral denoising. That's pretty aggressive. We'll come back and see if we can make that work. Finally, on the very right, option C is voice denoising plus gain. But wait, we have voice denoise, gain, voice denoise plus gain. Okay, we can listen to that. And now what's the difference between these two? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now we can open this up as a module chain and we can see exactly what is going to be processed and how it's going to be processed with this option. We have voice denoise with these settings and gain with this setting. So pretty aggressive, seven and a half dB of reduction. Let's see what this one has as far as a module chain. 7.5. And they, okay, so they're, they're, they're the same. What we can do from here is adjust the aggressiveness of these modules. If I click here, down in the little fader icon, we can make this more aggressive or less aggressive. Maybe we want to do something like that here. And just for comparison, do something like this over here. And we can even open up these modules and see exactly what's changed. Now it's down to 3.7. We go up to here to 7.5. If we went really aggressive, it's all the way up to 13 and a half. So that's what this little fader or slider down here at the bottom does. And notice as I change that, it's hard to see here. Let's go to B. As I change that little slider, the image up here is actually going to update as well. And we can visually see 
how aggressive the settings in those modules will be. Let's take a listen to A. And now we can make an informed decision. Which one do we like? We can hit render and we can render out these different options. Or we could even come over here and change these. Maybe we just want 12 dB of reduction. Maybe we want to put this into a surgical mode. So we can take these suggestions and then further modify them from there. If we don't like these options, we could just start over again and reset it. Now along with this also comes a new tab in our preferences pane. We can tell the repair assistant to ignore different types of problems, whether that be clipping or hum or whatever we want. All right, and that's it as far as what's new in the Elements version of RX7. In the next video, we'll take a look at what's new in the standard version. And then finally, in the last video, we'll take a look at what's new in the advanced version of RX7. I'll see you then.